Welcome back, Idol fans. <clears throat> Hollywood Week. And uh, this is now where it gets intense. This is where strategy comes into play. We'll, we'll learn who, who figures out the game of American Idol. Those that realize this isn't really a singing competition. It's really how well can you own your arrangement of your song every week. So now the strategy is picking a song but also knowing how you're going to edit it. You know, the song in, its, in and of itself isn't enough. You've got to have a good edit. And this is where strategy comes in. You, you now start to work with a piano person and a voice vocal person. They're there to help the contestants figure out their songs and arrangements. But again, remember, they don't have very much time to think about this like you do. So you've got to go in there with the solution already. So all they have to do is just put put the arrangement together. You know, you need to have the form figured out. And if you don't know how to do this, this is a skill that people don't realize that to be a successful contestant on a reality show, you've got to know how to put together arrangements. And you have to know how to do it fast so that you have time to think about it and let it sink in. You know, it's too all too common that during the week of preparation, that you know, usually it's just the last couple few days that you actually have an idea of what your song's going to be and what the arrangement's going to be. And sometimes you don't even get your, your actual arrangement until the day before you're supposed to sing it. So in Hollywood Week, so we're going to see we've got 200 people trying to share their time between three or four vocal coaches and three or four piano people, arranger people. And so it's really fast paced, really intense. Um, a lot of people get hurt feelings. A lot of people feel like, wait, this isn't what I'm trying to say. I don't know how to explain this any clearer. And this is where, you know, we learn that the skill is how can you communicate to the people that are making your track and doing your arrangement so that it fits what you're trying to do. All right. So with that background, what more do we have to do about strategy? Well, a lot of people are picking the same songs. So how does yours stand out? Okay, when David, my son, was on season seven, we get Hollywood Week. One thing that we had done before we left the Hollywood Week is it's like, okay, what are some of David's best songs? And we went through them and thought, okay, if he has a chance to pick a song, what's one that, that he can do that can stand out? So we thought of a popular song, one that we thought he could connect with, which was Crazy by Donald Sparkly. And so, you know, see Low Green. So when you see how that song was originally... And then you get to Hollywood Week, and they're going through the songs, and there's like 15 songs that they can pick for their their solo performance. So what we're going to see tonight on Hollywood Week, very similar. You're picking a song. Um, it is single, one by one sometimes. Sometimes you go out with five or ten people. Bottom line is you got 20, 30 seconds, maybe a minute. So you've got to make sure your moment. you get to your moments quickly. There can't be any... You know, downtime, you, you got to get right to those moments. Okay, well, what was interesting is we picked the song Crazy, so did 36 other people. So imagine if you've got to sing, you've got to listen to 35 other people and your judges sing the same song. It gets boring after a while, so how do you determine who's going to stand out? You know, what, what do you do? Well, guess what we noticed? Of the 36 contestants, 30 of them decided to just do it with the track, with, with the band track. So the local house band was going to play for them. Four or five of them decided they would accompany themselves on guitar. David was the only person that played crazy on keyboards, on piano. And so guess what? He stood out. And more importantly is the way we did the arrangement. It was real subtle. And so it caught people off guard, and, and it was kind of haunting and cool and vibey. And guess what? It worked. And early on, even like just during that first day of auditioning, before they actually went out to perform in front of the judges. So this is just all the contestants meeting in, in a big room. You know, it's just like a big cafeteria room. And they're just all in there practicing and getting ready to do their song. And when their song is called, they go up and practice, and that's it. Okay, so David was the only one that did crazy on piano. So there's 30 people that go up, 
They all sing together. They sit down. Then four or five more go up with guitars. They each perform one by one. And then David's the only one that goes up on the piano. So guess what? Do you think that was a good strategic move? I think so, because it got him to stand out. Now the sad thing is, no one ever heard his performance on the actual show. For some reason, they couldn't get the song license. So they actually made it look like he was on, or he was singing a different song. It looked like he was singing Waiting on the World to Change Again. That's not what he's saying. He's saying crazy. Well, the cool thing is, the response from the judges was the actual response, and the judges loved it. And so, you know, strategy, that is the focus of Hollywood Week. This is where we separate the uh, adults from the kids. We see who's got the music, musical maturity. It's not age, it's musical maturity. Who's prepared the best? That's what we're going to see tonight. Now, I love this opening section. I'm going to just let Harry uh, take, take the lead because this is going to set our mood for what we have coming up next. And that is the reality of the competition is now going to hit. Oh, crap. <laughs> Let's let Keith, let's let Harry, Keith, and JLo take it, but uh, Harry's going to do all the talking here. Firstly, we want to say a huge congratulations to every one of you making it this far. But uh, the pressure really is just getting started right now. Yes, it's time for American Idol's infamous group rounds. We're going to ask you guys to break up into three or four, in a group of three or four. It's totally up to you to choose your choreography, your styling, the song. Everything's up to you guys. But make sure you do enough to stand out. Right now, your fate is in our hands. And I think I can speak on behalf of my two incredibly talented, incredibly experienced co-judges up here. Y'all need to get real. This is a competition. What do y'all really want? Tomorrow, when you show up, be ready to work. Be ready to give it all. I said it before. Y'all got to lay it out. It's your performers. This is what you do. You can't go half-ass on this stuff. I'm, I'm looking around like, are these the same people that we put through? We're going to find out tomorrow. Good luck. Get some sleep. They have to okay. That's the, that's the setting for tonight. So let's go ahead and jump right into the auditions. And let's figure out who uh, who made it, who didn't make it. Now, one thing I want to say is the, the pace of tonight's episode felt really rushed to me. You know, I, I didn't feel that we really were, were able to digest what was going on very well with those that weren't making it. Um, we, we didn't really get to hear a lot of the contestants who didn't make it. And that's too bad because they had built up who these people were previously. So... I'm, I'm not real happy with the editing of this episode. I felt that it needed to be two hours. And I felt they were really struggling trying to get everything uh, put into that single hour. So I'm, I'm a little disappointed with the flow of the episode. Even though there were still some really good, great moments and performances. So let's, let's just see what's happening. Let's see how, if it gets controversial yet. You know, we, we do see that that the very, you know, they've got this thing with the, the guitar guy again, John Wayne Schultz. You know what? This is why this guy just, this guy's not, he's not going to be around. You know, I, I can't believe that they they think this guy's a good representative for country because, I mean, this guy's just not, just doesn't seem to have his act together. So as much as I want him to do well because he's from Utah, I don't get it. So I, I, I don't know how this guy is going to have any staying power. All right, so we open up with Jordan Sasser. And Jordan Sasser is somebody who the first round I wasn't really that impressed with. And a matter of fact, I just, I just got kind of a weird vibe from him. And again, you know, I don't want to be rude or anything, but he, just, he, just comes across, he doesn't come across to me at all like an American Idol. Um, he's got kind of a, a Broadway musical theater kind of voice you know it's it's that high tenor voice he can do a lot of things with his voice but I don't hear him you know I don't see anyone like him but I don't see I don't see him filling a void 
You know, I don't see America getting behind him enough. So even though he's got an okay voice, it just isn't American Idolish enough. It's okay, but not great. So, you know, with all due respect to Jordan, I just don't think he's someone that deserves to be around. So let, let's see if you can, if you're hearing something I'm not hearing. I had to wait two months to see you guys again. My first audition in front of the judges, my wife and I went together. Unfortunately, Alex got a no. You know, this is still kind of a weird situation with the, the wife. It was a really tough day. And, and I feel there's just something not right about their perspective, their mindset. You know, there's some delusion in here that, that I'm not comfortable with. I have wanted to do this for the longest time. I'll never forget when Kelly Clarkson won. I pointed at the TV and I said, I'm going to win that show one day. I'm going to sing for the rest of my life. So that's all I'm See, someone about. that says that, I'm going to win that show that day, someday. There's something unhealthy here. Again, okay, don't get me wrong. He's got a good voice, but this is a very common voice. You know, there's lots of people that sing just like him and even better. So I'm not getting him. Okay, I just, again, is he Kelly Clarkson's bookend? Is he the guy? No, he's not the guy. So with that being the case, we need to find someone more believable. This is more believable. All the leaves are brown and the sky is gray. And you know all the little girlies are gonna love this. Cause he's got that cool look, you know, vibey look. He looks like he looks like a star. So I think this guy has a lot of potential. There's also some cool rivalry. This guy just looks like a star. Just the way he's accompanying himself on the guitar too, it's way more pro level. Okay, so bottom line is, does that look more like a potential American Idol? Does that look like someone that's unique? You know, I think the guy's got a look, he's got a vibe. Again, his opening audition, he wasn't the greatest singer, but if this is his vibe, and this seems much more authentic, I think he fits really well. He's got a great look, he's got a great vibe, he sounds really good, he, he, he seems like he's a musician. So, could this guy be someone? You know, this kind of contestant hasn't really done outstanding on the show. You know, this is this is one of the challenges, but I think this guy has a lot of potential. I see this guy as a potential star. You know, do I see him as a solo actor as part of the band? I see him more as a band. He's got that vibe more. But I think the guy's really got a unique look. I can see the girls are going to like him. Um, I think he's got, he's going to have some edge. So I, I kind of like him as a contestant, um, even though it's not really my style. This isn't who I'd like to see be the bookend to Kelly Clarkson, but I think he has some legitimate potential. All right. Okay, so basically with Dalton, and we've got Jackie Butler, you know, they've competed in a Battle of the Bands thing in the past. Um, Jackie gets up and sings, and she made it through, and I have no idea why she made it through. Is, um, she's all over the place. I don't see her making it any further. Now what's what's disturbing is after this performance and we see Jackie get through, we see 
our next uh, group of females that we thought would all go through, and um, Melanie Tierce was in there. And what's interesting is I, I'm trying to figure out why she didn't make it, because even though, yeah, she was a little iffy on what she was doing, it wasn't that bad. And to think that they eliminated her, I, I'm not comfortable with that. Um, I thought she was actually one of the... Her audition was absolutely amazing, and I mean, Keith broke out crying. I mean, she just... Some of those notes she hit were just pure, pure music, pure emotion. And I really wanted to hear her some more. So the fact that she's gone and Jackie Butler's in, I don't get it. So again, I don't, that might be a producer call. I, I'm not sure why the judges, after feeling the way they did in that original audition, why they would boot her. So again, we're going to have to figure out what's going on. You know, we see a, a montage of some other singers. Um, Jen, Jen Bloso, uh, we see the young 17-year-old, um, let me get his name again, Thomas Stringfellow, and Olivia Rocks. All three of them seemed really good. They seemed like three that could make it to the final 24, but we barely even hear them. So is that the show saying, hey, these ones are so good, we're going to save them, or eh, they're not going to make the top 24, so even though they're good, let's not spend too much time on them. Okay, so, um, we're, we're already starting to see the show definitely giving way more face time to certain contestants. And, you know, the term they used during the season we were on there from the message boards and the hardcore idol fans was, again, the term pimping. And it's like the show's pimping certain people. You know, they're definitely giving certain people more sh camera time, using more on the uh, commercials and that kind of thing. Is that a big deal? I don't know. But the people on the message board sure seem to think it is. So all of you that are into this show, whether you think it is or not, that's part of the fun, right? We can have opinions. We can figure out if something's fixed or rigged or if it's completely fair or not. But for the most part, it's fair. It's just if you don't know what you're doing and you don't know what to ask as far as help goes, you can, you can crash and burn quick. And I think Jackie Butler's on her way out. Um, and Dalton is definitely going to win this this battle. He's he's definitely going to go much further than her. All right, so let's let's go back to uh, Jessica Cabral, Melanie Tear, Sonica Vide. Um, Jessica makes it through. Sonica makes it through. Does a very touching, another great performance. But Melanie Tears, I don't think her performance should have got her booted, and I'm upset about that. So. You know, not not a call I agree with. So we're starting to get some controversy. Um, the next person we see going out is that sweet girl. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. All right. So as we're moving right along here. We come up to La Portia Renee. Okay, anyone that can't see how amazing she is, I mean, she's she's the best singer. She might be the best singer that's ever been on this show. Um, she's fabulous. She's fantastic. She's got so many degrees of dynamics, intensity, um, control, power, subtlety. You know, she's amazing. So I really want to see what she does, you know, week after week. She's someone I'm going to look forward to. She's like this season's Melinda Doolittle, who's just like this world-class level, you know, like like should be a, a, a legend, a living legend. I think LaPorsche's that good. She really could do it. All right, so let's move right along. Harrison Cohen, Daniel Farmer. Um, these guys... You know, Harrison's an interesting young guy. He didn't deserve to make it. I agree with the judges on this call. Um, he just isn't strong enough. He's young. He's a likable guy. But no way is he prepared. He doesn't have the depth of musicianship. Daniel Farmer, on the other hand, I think he's got a really lot of skills. But this is a guy that his ego is just in the way. This guy's over the top. He's trying too hard to be the ladies' man. He's the guy that's not that good looking that wants to be and wishes he was, and so he plays that role even though he doesn't really fit it. 
So this guy's over the top. He's really good, but you know his skill set's not going to work. You know people aren't going to buy into him. He he's just not going to stay around a long time. And then Manny Torres. Okay, we know the show loves this guy. I mean, come on, he's the final audition of of episodes one through six. You know, he's the last guy. You know the show likes this guy. Now, does he have any humility? Is he going to last? Or is America going to become disenchanted? I think that's what's going to happen with this guy. You know, I think he's definitely talented, but I, I just see he's got to humble up. You know, him and CJ, I see them in the same the same boat. You know, Dan, this Danny guy too. You know, we've got some guys that they've got to figure out how to stay approachable and likable and not get too too egocentric. So I do agree Dan Danny Farmer and Manny Torres both should have gone through. I don't think Harrison should have gone through. So good call on that. Um, you know we do see now again a lot of these segments tonight they they were showing people getting through but we didn't really get a hair very well. You know Lee John I think he's okay. Um, I still don't think he's great. I think Melanie Huber, the girl, the cancer patient, you know, she's every bit as good as him. I was kind of bummed that she didn't go through, even though I didn't think Melanie was strong enough. I kind of felt this was coming. Um, it, it's sad because she's got a great story, but yes, depth-wise, I don't think she had it there. But I hope she can, you know, I'm worried about her personally, and I hope that her support system will help her make it through this and that her her letdown by not making it won't trigger any negative recurrences with her you know so it's it's hard to stay positive and up and keep the right thought processes in your mind after a letdown like this so that's what I'm worried about her but I hope she'll be okay all right now Shelby Z she's amazing okay I, I I definitely see her as being a seasoned veteran in a young body. I mean, she's a 22, 23-year-old going on 40. You know, she's got some she's got some experience underneath her. And and I think that again, it'll be interesting to see how America receives her. You know, she doesn't have that model look and that could work for her against her. Let's see how she deals with it. She definitely has has the skill set. I, I want to hear her more for sure. All right, now brings us to Geneva Rose Mitchell. Up next, we see her come out with her cello again. And you know, how long is this going to work? What's going to happen to her when she when she isn't with her cello? Can she maintain the cuteness? when she has to actually perform and, and she can't hide behind her cello. I don't think she's going to last. However, her uniqueness and just her as a contestant and just as a personality, she totally belongs on the show. And I'm, I'm really glad that, that they have given her some moments because it is fun to just show that it doesn't matter how techno technologically advanced you are. You know, music comes from the heart. And, you know, there's all kinds of different people. And so people's hearts come across differently. And I think Geneve has such a unique just life and outlook on things. She's fantastic. Um, I do think that it's going to run, her, her, her shtick is going to run out. It's like Casey, the bass player from a few seasons ago. It was awesome, but how do you reinvent every week? You know, she's already been pigeonholed into a category. How's she going to break out of it? So I'm excited for her, but I'm not very optimistic. All right, now, two of our younger contestants who are very, very impressive and strong and I think the show really likes. And let's watch, let's go ahead and watch some of this. First to perform in the next line is Gianna Isabella, whose mom made quite an impression during her Philadelphia audition. She's my mama jerk. She's my hairstylist, my clothing stylist, my makeup Again, we've got somebody who's got a parent that <laughs> can help because she's been through a lot of this. You know, her mom understands a lot of the little things that aren't just singing. 
And it seems like John Isabella has a very solid self-image. She believes in herself that she's really good. And I think that this performance is better than her audition. So I do expect her to do, you know, she, her and, and Tristan both that we're going to hear, both of them are the young up-and-comers. Okay, really good. You know, again, is she unique enough to be the next idol? I'm not sure. But what about Tristan? I'm here with my family, except my mom's not here because she's in the military. She's overseas. Yeah, I think that would be great. Okay, as far as story goes, everyone's going to love this girl. This is the story. You know, I gotta tell you, this performance isn't very strong. It's emotional, but it's not super. She's hitting some of those notes, but some of those weren't. She's missing a lot of these. Okay, some of you aren't gonna like what I say have to say here. But uh, what what I'm hearing. What I'm hearing uh, is John Isabella is way stronger than Tristan. Tristan's forward. still missing some. It's like her yeah. notes didn't resonate all the way. It's like when she was going for some of those notes, they didn't quite yeah, come out right. Back, so even though Tristan's got a really big, back thick roll. voice, she still seems young. And I'm not sure. Even though I know they love Tristan and her story is perfect and America's already bought into her story, I'm just not sure she's got enough to last. Gianna Isabella has more in the tank. I'm not feeling Tristan's gas tank is filled all the way. You know, there's some elements missing. So that song she just did, there were some subtleties. <laughs> that made it so that when she was singing those notes, they it, she didn't get all the way there. Okay, this is a thing that I still haven't figured out exactly how to define what it is. But there's an emotional element that releases when you get all the way under a note. And if you don't get there, what happens is it's like you're, you're trying to feel the emotion and it just doesn't quite get there. Okay, Tristan didn't get there. So again, I know she's one of the early favorites, but I just don't think she's going to have what it takes to make it all the way. So, with that being said, um, let's take a look at our two lifelong American Idol fans with their family. Now, what's nice is Michelle Marie's actually doing a pretty good job. But it's really young. It doesn't, again, this is cute. This is still like something for a state fair community. Okay, 
guess what the problem is here? This is about licks, not feel. She's missing the feel. And what's what's sad is, okay. Okay. That's a perfect example of, like, I can see why a lot of people would think that was a fantastic performance. Because the power was there. And her tone was there. So what was missing? Because, interesting enough, Michelle Marie, who I think was not as good as Kirsty Jewell, but Michelle Marie, I think, was more in control. Um, the other girl, her, her problem was she was worried about getting all the licks, but she wasn't worried about where the groove of the track was, and so she lost the time. And even when she came in on the second lick, the intensity wasn't right. It's like it needed to be coming at us in our face, and instead she was kind of hesitant. And so what happened is it messed up the emotion. So, you know, you could see your family waiting for the big notes, and yeah, woo, they got the big notes. But the problem was it it messed up the, the emotional flow. And so there's a different emotion when people stay in the pocket, stay in the groove, and they they're, the notes, it's all about precision. It's the notes have to fit in the exact right musical spot. And she was all over the place. So again, if you listen again, you'll see what I mean. And, and I'd like you to hear it because this is kind of important. You know, there's something to learn from this. Okay, so listen to the piano, Let's see how and is she with us? The stage. Fifteen years of it. See right there. That was hesitant. It, pitchy all over the place. See, she hit that note, and that sounded awesome, but the other stuff was so messy, that's why they didn't put her through. So again, you can get caught up in the sizzle and miss the steak. I'm sorry, Christy Jewell, but that's what you did. And again, it's not like you knew that that, I mean, it seemed like a really good performance. And in most settings, everyone would have gone nuts, but in this setting, nope. It wasn't accurate, not precise enough. Okay, so now, one's in, one's out. But now, what's a little disturbing is now we see a quick little, oh, and by the way, Carrie Courtney, Brooke Sample, Yusin and I saw, all these people didn't make it. And we don't know why. So this is where I kind of felt like the show really did us a disservice because we want to know why our favorites that you hyped up in the early audition shows just disappeared and you didn't even show us why. Okay, so some of us feel bad about that. All right, so there are some interesting people, you know, some personalities at like Ethan Coots, you know, Jake Dillon, um, the Rihanna Molinaro, the, the cop girl, you know, Brooke Sample, the real pretty brunette, you know, Kerry Courtney, I'm surprised, because he did seem really good. He's, he had a really nice vibe. I'm sorry he's gone. You said I sung. He, he was interesting, too. So, again, we don't know. We'll have to just guess. Maybe they'll show him. Maybe they're on the American Idol site. We can go see what happened. I'd like, you know, some of you might like to know. I'd like to know. I'd like to know what they didn't do. All right. So now let's get down to the final group of the show and let's just talk about this while we're watching it because I do think this is a fantastic final uh, segment and I do think that Trent Harmon really shows what makes American Idol and we need to talk about him. As the first Hollywood Week challenge nears an end, one line and one contestant in particular, Trent Harmon, has yet to perform. I feel Okay, we've all seen this, we know what's going on. What I want to talk about is what's going on in his head. Oh no, man. You know, this is let me just say, this is similar you know, when David was on Star Search. We had 
if we had a situation said, like this. They said, Trent, you have full-blown mono. You need to go rest, or if you can come home early, you need to do that. It, it just, it sucks. Sorry, guys, I'm feeling bad, man. Got to like two. Okay, when David was on Star Search, when he was like 13, this is kind of what happened to him is he, he wasn't getting better and we couldn't figure out what was wrong and we figured it was just a cold and it just needed to go away and you know stuff builds up in your lungs and your throat well we go to a a, a specialist and they scope David's throat and vocal cords and find out that there's like a defect there's actually something wrong with his vocal cord and so what happens is all of a sudden it's not about the show anymore it's like wow well, what do we do you know should we have him eat? should we just you know pull him off the show should we even have him sing tonight and you know david made a decision and it's like no you know what this is an opportunity i guess i'll just do the best i can and that's what he did and and that and that was the beginning of a few years where he you know wasn't sure if he'd be able to sing anymore and psychologically imagine a kid who's doing the thing he loves and then he's saying um you've got a defect your your vocal cords partially paralyzed it's not vibrating that's why you can't sing you can't hold any notes out if you're going to sing and it's like it's giving away it's just too weak it can't hold the note anymore and and it was some bizarre thing well that's how this trent guy must be feeling i mean he's got mono i mean i would think first of all he'd feel pretty guilty just sitting around any other contestants so to have to go through this and then have to 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 lift yourself up and perform and there's no acting here this is real trent uses his last few so, minutes to rest but his time has run out there's no ego is up last to face you know the this is where so i'm doing my best to maintain my voice is just we're going to see him at his worst and knowing how he can regroup and pick himself up. Okay, that's what an American Idol is. This is about emotion, feelings. Could him change the shape of that note. You know, he moved it around to a different position and it changed the tone and effect of that note. Okay, for someone to be that sick and pull off that kind of performance, that was amazing. You know, very powerful, very touching. Okay, now here's Poe. Now, Poe's overdoing this sister thing, okay? I think it's... But her naturalness and rawness is awesome. She's got this Rihanna thing going that I really like. And like I say, it's a thicker sound even than Ryan. I really like her sound. I think she's totally commercial. So if her personality is workable... And the you final know, contestant is another previous idol hopeful. Something Emily don't, Brooke, something don't talk about. Full advantage of her second and last chance. And you start. know, Emily Brooks, someone I want to talk about too, because I wasn't as impressed with her audition. Emily I thought she did too much. To okay, what Trent Harmon did really is he allowed time for things like, to know, settle in. Poe, <sighs> vibey, but they like her. I don't know if she's going to have that stain power. This is why I worry about the people that are raw. She's just got a great country commercial sound. I see her being a, a success no matter what happens on this show. She's got all the country things going. She's got the look. She's mature musically for as young as she is. And you know what? She knows how to work. I would, I would want 
she cheats me would be one of the easiest people to market. If she were to win this show, she could be the next Kelly Clarkson. I see her very marketable. You know, Poe's got potential, but I still feel she might be a little bit too rough. I don't know if she's going to have the work ethic and the inner toughness to, to compete at the level she needs to. But I really like her. I think she's fantastic. So this is a good way to end it. I like the drama. They did a really good job of building it up for the contestants, which is cold-blooded and brutal, but hey, it's great dramatic effect for us audience members. So, even though this was a very fast-moving episode, I agree with most of the people, with most of the judges, except for Melanie Tierce. And some of the ones that didn't go go through that we didn't get to hear, I'm, I'd like to know what they messed up on or just see if we can help figure out what the judges and the producers are casting for this season. Again, as a little wrap-up, Okay, as a wrap-up of the, the, the episode. Um, Hollywood Week, so far, again, I, I don't like the editing. I do like some of the moments. They're definitely now showing us who the top 24 are. <laughs> if, it's, if it's not obvious yet, you know, you can tell uh, Manny, John Isabella, Tristan, uh, Trent Harmon, most definitely, La Portia. Um, you know, if, if you guys really want to know, I know there are spoiler sites, you can go figure this out. But let's, hey, we've only got another episode or two, maybe three, right? So the important thing is, we did see some people get eliminated that we are kind of sad to see go. But for the most part, I think they've got it right. They've got, there, there's some really good contestants. You know, G Geneve isn't going to last long. Um, Lee Jean, I don't think, is going to last long. I was sorry to see Melanie Hoover go. Um, Shelby Z is going to last. Daniel Farmer, I don't think so. Manny Torres, I think, will, um, just because they've never had a guy like him. So I, I like him. I think he's got a good, he, he's, he fills a good spot in the casting for our top 12. See, here's another thing to remember. We, we talked 24, but one thing that I didn't believe until I was on the season is that the producers actually already kind of have their top 12 dialed in. Okay, there's a term they used, again, that season, which is there is cannon fodder, and there are people that they're going to put through to match up, but they know we're going to go pretty quick, you know, because they're really looking for that 12. The 24 is just a smoke screen. You know, it's like in, in season seven with David, there were like six kids that were 16, 17 years old in that top 24. But once we got down to 12, all those younger kids were gone. And so sometimes they're cute, they're good for ratings, you know, like this, uh, you know, the little cowboy girl, uh, uh, Michelle, the Michelle girl. Um, she's just not going to have enough to uh, to make it past, I think, even Hollywood Week. But she's definitely cute. Sonica, she's got that something special. I see her making it through. I thought Melanie Tears had a good shot. So again, I wonder what else happened. What didn't we see? Was there something else that might have happened? Because, you know, she was a little... She wasn't as accurate. Now, the other thing, maybe her song choice was an issue because she sang a song just like her other one. She's also a Christian worship leader. And, you know, I mentioned that some of them have a problem during Hollywood Week because they want to keep seeing Christian songs. And sometimes the judges, they want to hear something pop just because they're familiar with it. So is that what it is? I don't know. Um, Jen Blossel, I think she's amazing. I think she's got such a unique vibe. Um, this Thomas String fellow, he's also got a really interesting vibe. I wanted to hear more of him. Olivia Rocks. I think she sounded really good. I loved her take on Jeannie, Jeannie and Bottle. So, yeah, let's let's see what happens 
over the next couple weeks. Um, when you get into the group round, uh, the three and four at a time, that kill that kills off a lot of people because they just they're too selfish. They don't know their egos get involved. They don't know how to collaborate. They don't know how to give and take. They don't know how to make little adjustments when things aren't going their way. So these are people skills that we see in these group rounds, and some of these kids crash and burn because they're just too about them. So. I'm very uh, excited about this final season. I do think there are some potential s superstars. I really do. I, I, I could see half a dozen of these kids so far having long-lasting careers. So we'll see how they develop. Thanks for tuning in. I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.